Hello, in this video I will show you how to use this uh, mud blazer thing, uh, specifically how to use the icons, but I will also show you how to set it up so that it actually works on your uh, blazer project. Now obviously you can reference throughout these uh, uh, various features that it has, uh, or other components, preferably, right? So you have all these buttons, uh, uh, things like uh, even charts as well. Uh, I've done a few other videos on charts. Uh, uh, D3, I've done, uh, I've done the Chart.js, how to integrate Chart.js, but this is uh, perhaps more of a Blazor thing, although uh, I do believe there is some JavaScript involved as well. So uh, you get some charts, you get some buttons, uh, and if you're interested in, in developing using uh, perhaps more of a third-party design, not your own original design, don't want to spend time on that, uh, I believe this option is actually decent. It's not going to be as perfect as making our own buttons, making our own styles and designs, and obviously it will look like many other sites, but uh, it is a good option. It actually works. I have tried it on a couple of things. Uh, it does seem to work uh, quite well in terms of that there are no issues with uh, the whole technology, with the whole library. It is a sort of a Blazor library. I've also done a video recently uh, on how you can create one yourself, create a library uh, for Blazor components. Uh, but in any case, uh, we are now looking at the icons, right? The icons page and you can get all of these that they provide and you can actually search for them. So if you want to say do your phone, you can just type in uh, phone and uh, it should uh, it should give you a few different uh, types of phones actually now you'll copy this and you'll paste it and now let's take a look where you paste it let's take a look at uh, basically how you set it all up in the visual studio so we have a blazer application. Uh, in this case it's a client side blazer uh, you could do uh, pretty much the same thing in the server side blazer but the way you set it up would be a little bit different. Uh, there is a page in the Mud Blazor on how to do it. I think it's quite clear, but I'm going to go through it and explain to you. So basically, first of all, you need to go right click on the project and go to the NuGet packages because again, it's a Blazor library. It's not like a JavaScript or CSS uh, where you have to reference directly in the uh, in the HTML, which you have to do in this case as well. But this is uh, this works as a Blazor library. And again, if you want to learn how to publish them, if you want to see an example, uh, there is my video, my free now course, uh, uh, the second part of that course on YouTube, uh, on a sort of example, I show you a real library, a simple but real library that is actually published on the NuGet. Uh, and if you want to learn the sort of nitty gritty on how they work from scratch, you can take a look at my Blazor course where you will learn everything you need to know about the Blazor. Uh, so we are getting into this and I already have this installed. This would be the Mod Blazor. So basically type in Mod Blazor and install this Mod Blazor. As you can see, it is quite a popular library. Let's see if we can find the number. We probably can't, but there are uh, quite a few thousand downloads. So it's not something that one bloke created and you have to trust their judgment without knowing anything about it. This is quite a popular thing. People do actually use it. So we start, we start by referencing it somewhere, right? Uh, and uh, we do it right here in the imports, imports.razor. So we need the using statements. And you see right here, imports.razor. When you create a using statement here, it will go throughout every component, every page, every component, basically every .razor file, you will be able to access it like that. So this is the first thing you probably want to do, right? You have at using mod blazer. Now, the second thing is, you need to register it, right? You need to register it as a sort of a service uh, and not just in server side. In server side, you need to do it as well, but in the client side, you need to do it. Usually you don't probably need to do stuff like that, but in this case, you kind of have to add it. So you see we have in the builder, in the main, in the program.cs, in the builder, we have services uh, basically by default, and then we add also mod services. So you have to add this, otherwise it will fail, it won't work. 
add mod services. You do that and it will work. It will actually work. But this is not the end of it. We still need to reference the CSS, okay, the CSS and the JS, JavaScript. So we go to index.html in this case, or it would be index.cshtml in the server side. And then we just uh, reference them. And as you can see, it is content, right? It is content. See, like that content and mod blazer. So it does actually come from a library. And uh, again, if you're interested, you can either watch my course and learn more about blazer, or you can just uh, uh, look up that video I was talking about on, on YouTube, uh, part of my uh, now free course, uh, blazer examples, uh, the second part where I show you those interactions and how it all uh, sort of comes together. So we have content, we have mod blazer, and then we reference the uh, uh, CSS. Now, if we go to the uh, bottom, you don't actually see anything more. But uh, right here, we have uh, we have this uh, these fonts rather. Okay, so we have everything uh, referenced and ready to go. Now we can go to the index.razor, and I'm going to show you how to use the actual icons. It's quite simple. We have basically two options. You have the icon itself. You have the icon itself. And you can provide whichever icon you want. So you see you do icon, then you do add icons, material, and then you can do either filled or some other options. And you can just do it like that. The, the uh, whole IntelliSense thing. Let's see if we can get it to work like this. So you see you have either filled, outlined, rounded or sharp. Now, it's very easy to look up. You can either obviously go to the documentation and see what's what, and that's probably what you will do because you will have to search for the actual icons, uh, see what it looks like. But uh, if you don't want to do it, if, you, if you're just sort of throwing stuff uh, quickly, you can just go through here. And then you can choose, okay? You can choose, see, just like that. And say, do keyboard, for example, and you have all these different uh, keyboard uh, things, keyboard arrow up, let's say, and why not, right? Now, if you want to add style, you do it with a style property. It's, uh, it will basically deal with the style of the underlying element, and that uh, can be applied to every uh, mod blazer uh, component. Whether it's a button or an icon in this case, doesn't matter. It will basically apply the style to the underlying HTML element. In this case, we just want to increase the font size so that the uh, icon here would be a bit bigger than the regular one. We also have a mod icon button, which will act as a sort of a button, not perhaps uh, the most exciting button, but it will have an icon in the button. And you can add styles to it. You can add styles to it. Um, like that you can also add a class okay if you have a class you can add a class if you only need the styles you can add only the styles and you pick the icon as you can see in the same way now obviously with the uh, with a button you can have on click like that on click now it's not javascript right uh, it's not that sort of direct uh, javascript html kind of thing so you don't use the add sign you just do on click and it will work perfectly. So this is the mod blazer. And this is sort of my recommendation from what I've seen so far, if you really have to use these uh, uh, third party components, uh, uh, this one I can truly recommend because I've seen it actually work, I've seen it uh, work properly, I did not see any issues. And you can actually customize the components, which is always a great thing. Now, with that said, do subscribe to this channel for more such content. There will be some more entertaining content to come. Also support this channel on Patreon where you can also get the source code for various uh, projects that you see on this channel in the tutorials. And with that said, we will conclude this video.